Today I tell you the story of The Strangers' Hall, Norwich. It was the first folk museum to be established in this country and was opened in 1900 by Mr. Leonard Bolingbroke, a far-sighted citizen who had acquired an old merchant's house of the medieval period in the heart of the city of Norwich. The quaint paved courtyard of the house. A retired and secluded spot, peaceful and quiet after the bustle and noise of clanking trams and hurtling motor lorries in the busy street outside, from which it is reached by means of a narrow passage. It is really like stepping into the Middle Ages. Note the 15th century arch and Tudor window frames. The flight of steps leading up to the entrance to the hall. Note the delightful groined porch with seats on either side and a studded oak door. In 1922, Mr Bolingbroke presented the buildings and collections to the city of Norwich, and since that date the corporation has been able to acquire surrounding buildings at one time part of the original property. The Banqueting Hall, the main room of the original house, which must have witnessed many a civic dinner, for several owners of the property in the 16th and 17th centuries held the mayoral office. Note the open kingpost roof, the tracery in the spandrels of roof beams, and the carved oak screen which masks the entrance door. The magnificent oak staircase, put up together with the window which lights it in 1627 by another mayor of Norwich, Francis Cock. He was not content with the simple rooms of the previous century and built out a new wing consisting of four rooms to which this staircase gave access. Note the remarkable carving of the pendants between the balusters. Built over the kitchen and buttery, which were entered through two doors seen in the centre of the picture, was the solar or Lord's Chamber, the only bedroom in the original house. This room has a magnificent wooden fireplace beam spanning eight foot and carved with the merchant's mark of Nicholas Southerton. Note the moulded oak beams of the ceiling. The rush-strewn floor, a chorus calamus, once very common on the rivers and broads of Norfolk, but getting scarce. A view of a really charming panelled room, part of the wing built on the west side of the hall in 1651 by Sir Joseph Payne. The Flemish armoire, or linen cupboard, on the right has massive folding doors of carved oak with beautiful hinges of pierced iron work. The city of Norwich offered a home to many thousands of Flemish craftsmen who left their own country through religious difficulties, and this magnificent piece of work was undoubtedly built up in the Stranger's Hall itself by some of these foreign workers. It is a rare piece, and I believe only some seven examples are known. Note the rushlight holder, the spinning jenny, and the fallen log in the fireplace, which really looks as though it might have just burnt through last night. This is one of the greatest charms of the place. Every room gives the impression that it is still occupied and that the owner has possibly just been called away. An Elizabethan bedroom with panelled oak bedstead and oak cradle. An austere room without much comfort. The mattress, made of plaited rushes, is supported on a foundation of interlaced rope. Notice the contraption for airing the bed. It is composed of curved wooden slats which support in the centre an iron tray to take a pan of hot embers. The framework is designed to protect the bedclothes from the embers and prevent fire. It is a cumbersome method, but it causes more curiosity than almost any other object in the whole house. One of the rooms had been redecorated about 1750 with typical Georgian panelling and carving, which afforded the opportunity of illustrating this gracious period in the evolution of furniture, a period rich with the designs of Adam, Chippendale, Sheraton, Hepplewhite and others. The room is furnished as a simple dining room. The drawers of the bureau are used for the display of Georgian shoes and buckles, snuff boxes, fans, horn combs and other things in common use. The Georgian bedroom, with beautiful patchwork hangings on the bed, curtains and coverings for the chairs. 
It was the work of a lady belonging to one of our old Norfolk families. She lost her son in 1810, and to assuage her grief, spent two years in making these hangings. During this period, she saw no friends, and never left the house. All the furniture was presented by one donor, including the dressing table and requisites. The Victorian parlour, replete with all that was best and worst in that period of magnificent craftsmanship and atrocious design. There is the usual round mahogany table with its burden of wax flowers, family album of photographs, Bible, fitted workbox and blotter with needle cover. Family portraits adorn the walls, as well as a steel engraving of the coronation of Queen Victoria. There are innumerable small tables and chairs, antimacassars and footstools, stuffed birds, lustres and other ornaments. In a word, Victorianism at its height. I believe it is the first room of its kind on permanent exhibition in any museum. So, that concludes our brief introduction to the Strangers Hall. I hope you will feel inspired to support the museum so that a hundred years from now this venerable building will still be enjoyed by future generations of visitors.